Good afternoon, virtual world. My name is Erin Michelle Washington, and I'm a producing associate at American Conservatory Theater. So happy to be here with our friends at the Berkeley Rep School of Theater with their third conversation in the series, Creative Careers. Today's conversation is called How to Apply regional theater fellowships and internships. So as we go through our conversation today, you can use hashtag creative careers to ask any questions that you have that are burning, because I know we will have burning questions today. Um, or you can use the HowlRound chat feature um, that's right on the website. So I'm so thankful to be here today. Um, I was actually asked by Anthony, who's here representing the Berkeley School of Theater. And when I was a fellow at HowlRound at Arena Stage, Anthony was in space with me. So thank you so much for having oh, me. Oh, thank you for agreeing <laughs> to moderate this panel, Erin. I really appreciate that. Such a lovely introduction. Erin and I, we are fellows together back at Arena Stage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am now the uh, program manager here at uh, Berkeley Rep School of Theater. Uh, and so excited today to talk to everyone about what it means to be a fellow and how to apply for internships at regional theaters across America. All right, so we have a cool crew of folk today. So I'm just gonna let everyone introduce themselves. First, we have Gretchen Fayer. Hi everybody, my name is Gretchen Fair. I'm the Associate General Manager of Producing at the American Conservatory Theater and I'm the Fellowship Coordinator. So I'm honored to be here, thank you. We also, we also Sean have Sean at Arena Stage. Greetings, I'm Sean Maurice Lynch. I am the Communities and Training Programs Manager at Arena Stage. Cool. Emily at Hartford Stage. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Larson. Um, my title is Studio Manager, but I'm also the Apprentice and Intern Coordinator for all of our programs at Hartford Stage. And last but not least, Camila Long, Oregon Hello. Festival. Hi, my name is Camila Long. I'm the manager of special campaigns at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. All right, thank you guys so much for coming and having this conversation with us. Um, so today is gonna go like this. I'm gonna ask a few questions. We're gonna talk about our programs, how you can get entrance into our programs. Um, and then if you guys have any questions, we're gonna go to the virtual space and ask that. So I think my first question would be, what is, um, what was your road to your career? Um, I know a lot of us have been interns and fellows at different theaters. Um, what was your road to your career? Uh, I guess I can start. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was an actor in Washington, D.C., and I ended up teaching a summer camp at Camp Arena Stage. Uh, and from there, I became a fellow, and through my fellowship, uh, I was a senior fellow, and a job opened up, and I applied for it. And from there, I just got an arts administration, and I kind of haven't looked back since. I've been doing education and devised theater uh, for almost seven years now. Um, well, let's see. I started um, as an actor in college, and then. Uh, went into uh, an internship program at St. Michael's Playhouse in Colchester, Vermont for two summers and through that learned about company management and house management and that really, those internships really helped me get to a place uh, and to learn about those things. And I didn't even know there were options for me at that point and totally changed my career and went into theater management because of it. Cool. cool. Camila? Camila? Well, I got my, I I started off as an actor as well. I got my um, bachelor's degree from Alabama, the Alabama State University. All right. Alabama. Uh, went on to become a professional actress, got my equity card, decided to go to grad school, got my MFA in performance as well, um, and started teaching and a professor at Alabama State University as well. Secondary school, teaching artist, uh, community producer, director, now, <laughs> going into uh, <laughs> arts management. <laughs> you asked. I love it. I love I it. I love it. Love it. Sean, what Sean, about you? What about you? Well, I, I began my career and still am uh, as an, an actor. I went to the Penn State University for musical theater. Um, and then I joined Kahoot to Farina Stage with their summer uh, camp program, which got me into teaching artists. And I've been doing that for I think almost almost ten years now, 
um, as a teaching artist, and then I joined the fellowship program uh, at Arena Stage, and now I'll, I have this position. So it's been a balance between being an actor and a teaching artist. And Emily? <laughs> I guess I'll be next. Um, so just like everyone else, I started off as an actor. Um, I got my BFA from NYU, Tisch, um, and did a lot of performing um, right out of school. And that actually led me to Hartford Stage. I am a native of Connecticut, came back to the area, and started working with Hartford Stage as an actor. Um, and actually, uh, as through performing there, uh, people noticed that I was really good with the kids in the shows. And um, someone suggested, you know, have you ever tried being a teaching artist? So I went that route, did that freelancing, and then kind of got involved in, you know, arts administration and education that way. And my path led me back through Hartford Stage now on this end of it. So kind of a slightly different path, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> that sounds phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> with me as well, started off as an the first week of June so that they can, they can plan accordingly uh, through ACT. That is great. So what about uh, Camila? Repeat the question. I'm sorry. What is what is? Uh, can you uh, tell can us you a bit about the program, the apprentice program at Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and what is the process to getting to be a part of that program? Well, I know you can begin the process at July first every year. Um, you can start. We start taking. No, we start taking applications in March, and the deadline is July first every year. So you'll go online and um, see where, what area you're interested in. I think the good thing about our program is that you actually don't have to have uh, the job in mind that says just stage management. You can also create jobs here, you know, um, whatever you're interested in, in the field of theater um, and who you're studying. So I got a little bit distracted. My phone <laughs> rang while I was doing it. But um, for me, I was the producing fellow. And I say that because as a producing fellow, there was a hidden job in my fellowship, and that was the casting assistant. So not only was I the producing fellow, I also became the casting assistant. And I never dreamed that that would be something that I would do in that position. I didn't necessarily apply for it, but it was something that's there for you um, in our program. Phenomenal. Um, can you talk a bit more about like creating your own job there through, a f through the fellowship program? Yes, um, as a, a art, the producing fellowship at um, the Oregon Shakespeare Festival allows you to be a sponge. Okay, so you get to be in the room with all of the senior le leadership. So just think me coming in from Alabama, I come to Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and I get the opportunity to sit with Bill Roush um, in every meeting. Uh, so I was afforded that opportunity. Um, and are we still live? I can't tell. Are we still on? Back. You're good. Okay. Okay. And uh, so this allowed me not only to be in the room with them, it allowed me to see who in the room I melded with. And that just happened to be the uh, casting director. So not only was I able to be the casting assistant, I was also able to produce Midnight Projects here as a producer and learn about that. Um, while I was here, so that was something else I did, and also worked as a assistant producer on projects in the room. So mine uh, was the producing fellow, but I had a chance to create um, my job based on the people that I was able to make connections with and began to build on what I wanted to do. That is phenomenal, and, and we'll keep continuing to talk about that Um that space of creating out of the position that you go into a theater for. What about you, Sean? Um, can you talk a bit about the fellowship program at Arena Certainly. Stage? Uh, so here at Arena Stage, our fellowship program is called the Alan Lee Hughes Fellowship and Inter Internship Program, um, which is named after a, a Tony-nominated African-American lighting designer who's also an associate at Arena Stage. Um, and our fellowship is a seasonal fellowship that usually goes from mid to late August through end of May. Um, and our summer 
uh, internship is also through uh, the summer months of June and, and August. Um, our fellowship is unique because it's really hands-on. We, we like to have our um, fellows actually be integrated as part of the staff. There's no real difference between them being uh, anyone else inside our inside of our uh, institution, and so our fellows get to you know lead programs and get to really be a part in cultivating what the season is going to be and how we execute the season here uh, in Washington uh, D.C. That's great. What about you, what about you. Our program at Harper Stage is, is kind of similar to how they run it at Arena. Um, we are also a season-long apprentice program. Um, we start early September and run through May. Uh, we currently have 11 apprentices in nine different departments. And uh, while they're with us, again, just like Sean was saying, they're fully integrated into the staff and uh, are really important members of our team. Um, so they are, you know, they're doing their everyday work within their department. And then we also have a series of seminars throughout the season that kind of show them a little bit more than what they're there to do. So if you're in education, you can also learn about lighting design. Um, and we also um, have a, a project that each of our apprentices do. Uh, it's kind of like a capstone style project and they each design their own um, project that they take from start to finish and that's what they're working on right now. We've got some really interesting unique ideas like uh, podcasts or you know teaching students how to be theater critics, things like that. Um, and then we also have you know fun activities and uh, we send them down to New York City for a networking day once a year which is a really cool opportunity so we really try to have a really well-rounded experience for all of them while they're here. This is phenomenal. Like, I am so excited about what everyone is doing. Anthony, can you tell us about the Berkeley School of Theaters? Uh, here at Berkeley Rep, our programs are very similar to uh, Hartford as well as <laughs> to Arena Stage and everyone else's. I think everyone kind of runs off the same model. Uh, we do have 15 uh, positions, and they're very unique in that. Um, not only are they getting that kind of cultivated class feel, but they also, like Hartford, have a project to work on. And our fellows, actually, they get to not only be mentored, but then they turn around and mentor our teen council uh, as they produce a one-act festival. So the fellows serve as their mentors as these teens are putting on their own one-act festival, so, which is really, really cool. Uh, our fellows as well, like all the other fellows at the our partner organizations on this chat today, get to be an integral part of what is happening at Berkeley Rep. Uh, if we could turn the camera around, I wish we could, you could see five of the fellows are right now running the logistics of this screen. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think have fellowships are something that are really important uh, in nurturing the next generation of theater makers. Uh, as all of us that appear and uh, via online uh, were fellows or interns at one point in time as well. So what do you think distinguishes your program? Um, Gretchen, can you talk about, like, what do you think is a touch tone part of ACT's fellowship program where I can say, oh, maybe I should go to Berkeley Rep to do this, but I should go to ACT to do this? I think that the opportunity for the fellows to work with the artists and the staff that come throughout the year for our shows is absolutely incredible. Um, you know, just like all the other programs, the fellows are immersed into the work and they're there to learn from their mentors, from designers and directors who are visiting in town. That is really important. And then what they get to do is through that information that they're learning towards the end, they get to create their own project. They get to produce their own project in which they have to, uh, they have to raise the money, they have to cast, direct, design, stage manage, um, and then they get to present the work five days, um, five performances in our costume shop space, which is the 49 seat uh, black box theater. And that's something that they look forward to all year. So everything that they've learned throughout the year, they get to put towards this project. And it's something that really empowers them so that when they leave, they know that they have created something so special that then they can move on to the next um, part of their life. I mean, the the information and, and work that they do helps them become a stronger individual and they get to find their passion through the fellowship so that whatever their next step is, they have that strong foundation. That's fierce. 
Um, what about you, Emily, at Hartford Stage? I'd say we're we're quite a similar journey. Um, you know, it's really important. Uh, for us to make sure that all of our apprentices are really supported while they're with us. Um, you know, they're uh, a very important part of our company and we couldn't do what we do without them in any of our departments. We really want to foster um, their careers while they're with us. We really see this program as that that bridge between their educational uh, career and their professional career. So we really aim to do activities that kind of help them not just learn while they're here, but also kind of de determine what their next step is. You know, you you go to school, you study what you study, and you think that you're going to be on one particular path, and sometimes things change. I think people already referenced that in our on our own panel. You know, you were on one path, and then something happened in your life, and it kind of changed what you were doing, and you said, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is what I want to do now. So we try to do, you know, open that world up to our apprentices while they're with us so that they can see all the different options and make an uh, informed decision about what their next step is. So Camila, what are some of the professional development um, events or things that Oregon Shakespeare Festival does for fellows? I think the, the, the master key or major key to the success of our program is the fair forums. Uh, Sharifa Joka. Every Thursday, all of the fair participants come together and we have a roundtable discussion where we are taught uh, diversity, inclusion, and equity um, work and methods and terms. We learned about gender, um, what I have, uh, microaggressions, how to use your power, authority, and influence um, in the room. Uh, also, how we can access the resources at the festival and what opportunities we have. So we get a chance every Thursday to all come together in one place and network with one another. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that that was really paramount for me, and um, she all and also allowed her to help us in our journeys um, on an individual basis. And she would and it's also a time where guest lecturers or artists who are on campus can come in and speak with us as well. So it's well thought out and planned, but I have to say by far, the diversity and inclusion and equity training that we get in those fair forums um, change uh, our lives in the room. Mm. Sean, can you speak to Arena Stages program or any professional development stuff that you do within the institution for fellows? Certainly, certainly. Um, with our fellowship uh, program, about Twice every month we have um, workshops or meetings with uh, senior staff members so um, or department heads, whether that's uh, who's ever in charge of our communications department or our community engagement department or meeting our artistic um, director, Molly Smith. And in those meetings, um, our fellows are able to, for one, hear about um, those artistic um, artists and how their journey to help them through their careers, but also to ask any questions or concerns they might have about their position right now in the theater or where they see theater as a whole going forward. So I think that that program um, within our program is one of the key things that we that, that makes us unique is that there's always some type of conversation going on with our fellows on how to better and serve the career. Um, we also have a lot of communication with the other theaters in Washington, D.C., because Washington, D.C. has a lot of theaters, um, small and big. And so we have several opportunities where our fellows uh, get to meet with other fellows from other places like Center Stage um, and have their own little forums and conversations on what they see their careers or what they, how they want to advance the next generation of theater artists. Hmm. Anthony, can you speak to professional development programs at Berkeley Red? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we not only offer that curriculum, uh, and that kind of forum for the, the fellows to go in and, and learn and be mentored uh, staff-wide, but that professional development is also providing those networking opportunities that everyone's talking about that really deepens the impact of that sustained time in one place. Uh, our fellows spend 11 and a, almost an entire year here at Berkeley Rep, and in that time, you are building that network that you're gonna take away with you uh, to start theater companies or the people who are going to be able to connect you to that next job. So not only are you learning the ins and outs of regional theater and how a professional Lort Theater works, but you're also building that network so that when you leave here, 
uh, hopefully you are connected in a way that you weren't before that can help impact and expand your chances of sustaining your career in the theater. Uh, I think that's one of the really special things that we teach. Uh, they're getting that that year-long mentoring and learning everything from resumes and uh, how interview skills to actually sitting down, like with some of our colleagues were saying, sitting down with the artistic director, sitting down with the literary manager, sitting down with the ground floor director, uh, sitting down with the, every different department. I think fellows have such a valuable experience in that they get to see the ins and outs of the theater that many people don't get the opportunity to do. You could be in the theater for 20 years working as a professional in your specific job that at Berkeley Rep and these other organizations, the whole, the access is there. Mm. And that's, a, I believe, what we provide and, and what all of these other institutions provide as well. Mm. So let's talk about access a bit. Um, I remember being a fellow a couple of times and I didn't have a lot of money, you know. Um, my parents thought I was insane for even <laughs> wanting to take some of the fellowship programs where I was not paid, you know, honestly, a lot of money. Um, did not have housing um, where, you know, I'm from Alabama, so I was moving to big cities um, to, to go into these programs. So what are your theaters doing around access, um, around housing, around raising the wages for internship and fellowship programs and um, because we know that when there is not a lot of access then there's a limited pool of people that can actually participate in even applying for a fellowship program so I think that's something that you know the field is talking about but um, what are some of the things that your organizations are doing or thinking about um, along these lines of of broadening the access for fellowship programs? Um, I know at Berkeley Rep, that's one of the things that we are currently uh, facing, and I'm sure, as you said, the field is talking about every day, uh, making sure we are reaching the people who not only have the, the means, but those who aren't uh, necessarily always thought of uh, and the first thought. Uh, so I know housing is something that is really, really difficult, uh, especially when you're in large cities or even in, in smaller cities. Housing for fellows is something that's a, a big strain on the institutions, but uh, that is something that we're Berkeley Rep are really committed to. Um, I know some other places pay more so they can subsidize that housing. So it's just a matter of the like, give and take of what the theater is able actually to do in that moment. Uh, and also, where are you looking for fellows? Uh, where are you looking for your interns? How are you recruiting? Uh, what are your strategies of engagement? And I know we are for, we at Berkeley Rep are really looking at FaceTime, going and spending as much time with as many applicants as we actually can to help them uh, strengthen their resumes, strengthen their interview skills, uh, be able to be competitive when the application process comes uh, to those who have been getting more traditional access. Hey, Anthony. Um, Camila, OSF? Well, one of the things they've done uh, this in 2015, we had the first inaugural uh, Paul Nicholson Fellow, uh, which I think is great because it's a fellowship that allows the fellow to shadow the executive director this year. And also they get the chance to attend the board meetings, have a relationship with the board, uh, also um, of spend time in the development office and also work with the financial officers, uh, just like an executive director would. So I'm re I'm really excited about them doing that this year. I don't think they've done that in the past. So so you know it's a different aspect of the art and allowing access to the an opportunity to go in the room with the board and sit in through the minutes. Um, people in the organizations don't have here don't have that access. Speaking to what you said about that, so. All right. <laughs> yeah, you, Sean, at Arena Stage. Well, uh, at Arena Stage, we, we don't provide um, or offer housing for our, our fellows, but we do have resources to help um, potential uh, applicants to get housing elsewhere. Um, but in this is our 25th anniversary uh, for our fellowship program at Arena Stage. And in that 25 uh, years, we've actually have increased our stipend, um, weekly and stipend for our fellows and our internship program. So that's something that we're constantly um, looking into and working on is how do we, you know, stay competitive? How do we increase the stipends or how do we um, create new positions? Uh, we have a new technical direction 
uh, fellowship position that we're going to start this next coming season. So it's something that we're constantly always um, evaluating and researching, and we do um, I think it's about every two years we'll do a report on our fellowship program just to see where we are now and where do we want to go and what steps can we take to try to include um, more applicants or of diversity, uh, particularly because that's one of our big statements, uh, mission statements here at Arena Stage, just to include and diversify uh, the theater. Great. Emily? Well, you know, it's the the same question across the board. You know, access is a big uh, a big factor in all of this. Um, we're happy at Hartford Stage that we do have housing for our apprentices. It's actually only about a block away from our offices, which is really exciting, and that's really close to the theater too. Um, and we also provide parking, which you know, being we're not a huge city, but being in a city, that's oh a huge factor. My God. <laughs> yeah. Hartford Stage. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so our stipends, I wish were larger, and we always are, are looking to find ways to expand on that. But you know, we we try to have other opportunities um, available. Um, and also, in recent years, we've made it so that our apprentices, um, if they choose to, can also get some extra work. Um, working in concessions, bartending at the theater itself to earn a little extra money while they're here. So, you know, wherever and whenever we can find those opportunities, we try and expand on that. And then it's just, you know, expanding on the apprenticeship itself and making that really exciting and thrilling and giving more opportunities while you're here. So I reference like our networking day. That's something we've been doing for the last couple of years. We take our apprentices down to New York City and line them up individually with uh, professionals in the field so you can sit down with them, kind of chew their brain, you know, whatever, and, uh, and really get an, a sense of, you know, their path and how their career works and what they can do to follow in their footsteps or, you know, create their own journey. Um, so, you know, it's just expanding the opportunities that they have while they're with us. That's great. So, okay, so we talked about access. So then I remember my first day actually at Arena Stage. I was very nervous. Um, <clears throat> one of the first people I met was Molly. And she came in and she was like, hello, I'm the artistic director. So uh, my question is, because we've all been fellows or interns in these spaces that seem so big and grand, um, how do you help your uh, the fellows and interns feel like they can call this place home? How do you help welcome them into the space and make sure that their time and space is not just, oh, go do a print job, oh, go over here and get my coffee and, and sharpen some pencils. How do you help them feel like I am a young professional in space? Um, and what, if you have an experience as you as an intern or fellow that was positive or negative around that thought, can you speak to that? Because I think that we're at a time and space where a lot of people are not entering internships and fellowships in the way that they used to. And I feel like fellowships are a great space of learning. So I really want us to get our folk back. Um, so talk to us about how you welcome us into space. Um, well, before any of our fellows even start, um, I get uh, I ask for bios and a headshot or some sort of photo, and I send it out to the entire staff so that they can see the people that will be joining them for the next year, read a little bit about them. I always ask for something fun. It's not all about where they went to school, and you know, I, I, we really want to get to know them. Um, and then when they arrive, uh, their supervisors take them around, walk them, give them the tour, introduce them. Um, as a coordinator, I make sure that I've touched base with everybody to make them feel welcome. And then once all the fellows arrive, we have a, a fellows orientation. And we sit them down and we talk about the year and we talk about the monthly meetings. We talk about the fellows project. And it's really a safe place. I want them to feel as if they can come to this, um, to ACT and um, really um, feel like they can grow, they can ask questions, they can ask for help. Um, and so that's sort of where we start. And so from then, we have the monthly meetings where they get to meet senior staff and really talk and ask questions about their route so that they get to learn about all the other departments. It's really important for them to uh, feel welcomed so that because they will be with us for, you know, anywhere from nine months to a year. Anyone else can just jump on in. 
Well, um, something that we've been doing at Hartford Stage is um, we do the same thing that they do up there with uh, an orientation day and all of that. Um, but we, when they move in, we take them to a baseball game, which is always fun. Things like that. You know, it's not all about just work, right? Um, we also <laughs> we also have um, a buddy program. So each of our apprentices is lined up with a member of our staff, and we do some events. We have like a happy hour event, and we'll do a potluck dinner partway through the season. And then periodically, those buddies will meet up with their apprentices and just touch base with them, see how they're doing, see any you know if they need any advice or guidance or anything. So it's another point of connection. And those buddies are people who are not in their own department, so they can also learn a little bit more outside of their department and have someone to, you know, kind of touch base with that, that, that can, can lend them a good ear and kind of guide them along the way. So that's kind of an important part that we've been growing of our program. I want to thank, I want to you, thank all you all for the idea sharing that's going on right now because yeah. I'm hearing all these wonderful ideas from these other programs. Uh, ooh, we here at Berkeley Rep, very similar to some of the institutions that have talked and organizations so far. But one of the really cool things that happens in the first all staff meeting of the season, our artistic director, Tony Ticone, gets the fellows up in front of the whole staff and introduces them. So they not only mm -hmm. has that picture been circulated in that bio, but also you actually get that FaceTime up there with the artistic director talking a, a little briefly about yourself to the entire organization uh, as a nice introduction. And then, you know, I feel like my job is to be that nurturer, to be that person who's mm -hmm. on their side no matter what, um, through the good and the bad, and, and to make sure that that welcoming is happening. So the welcoming is happening from the dedicated staff member, but also from the entire organization. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the fellows are integral to the everyday uh, running of the, the theater. And I want to hear other responses, but I think we should really press upon that point. Can you say that last sentence one more time, if you remember uh, what you said? Uh, the fellows are integral to the everyday running of the theater. That is important. I think sometimes in our field, we forget. We forget how important fellows are. One thing that I try to do just in my job as a producer at ACT is to show that someone... Um, in an artistic staff, like I take all of the fellows out to tea and, and coffee like every other week to just like have a communication to say, I'm not hierarchical. I'm not going to talk down to you. You should feel like you can approach me at any time. We can talk about life. We can talk about art. We can talk about theater. Um, but I hope that, and I'm speaking to all of the theater folk out there, that we not forget how important our fellows and apprentices are because they're sacrificing their time to be with us. Um, I just had to make that point. Camila, can you talk to us? Yes, um, yeah. one of the things that uh, we do is uh, have the, a fair mixer as well. Um, but the main thing I think the magic is and I say again, the major key is I felt like as a producing fellow, I had all out access to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. I didn't feel like there was a door that I couldn't enter. <laughs> I had the key card and I could go. And that's what I did. Um, uh, and Sharifa would say, go. Did you read? Did you read all the plays? Did you go to the plays? Did you go to the show? You know, we get over 20, I think 25 comp tickets. So we get to see as many shows as we can see. We get to see the art. Um, also, uh, you get to, uh, you have the license to have dinner, coffee, or go and talk to anyone you wanted to. Like you said, opening that up. Um, the reason why I have this job now is because I could travel through the building and I, would, I, tr I trickled down to development one day and they offered me chocolates. So I would come down <laughs> on Fridays. Yeah, I would come down on Fridays and uh, get a piece of chocolate and, and do a chocolate dance. Chocolate Fridays and the development department <laughs> would join in. So I was building a, and cultivating a relationship in the department that I had no interest in at the time. Didn't know anything about. Um, and I just built this network and this relationship because I had this access. And another thing we were taught is the resources, resources. Sharifa would really talk to us about, well, okay, what resources do you have? Well, did you get do this? You know, and if I wanted to bag off 
um, of an opportunity, she re, re, she reaffirmed that for me, and not just her, you know, others around me. So it's kind of dangerous getting that type of access <laughs> because you All know right. when you. Yeah, I had that much. I felt like, you know, superwoman around here. So now I, uh, being in two different positions now, I, I don't have all that access. But I do have the power, <laughs> I do have the power, authority, influence to build my own, you know, access to things that I want to, you know, get into around here. But my key, the key, major key for me was network, 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 and use your access to cultivate relationships with each other. Um, and, and this is the last thing. I think, Erin, you were here for this. We did our Fair Network Conference this year, our first yes, inaugural. Fair, yes, bought um, all our fair partic participants from the United States to one place. And we got a chance to really delve into each other's work and network with each other. And we made history at the same time. So yes, we that's did. all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That was great. What's more to say? That was <laughs> <laughs> um, no, just like Mo said. It's, it's a it's about cultivating a, an environment that you know you you're able to just learn and grow as much as possible. Um, you know, my, uh, Anthony was was the head of my my fellowship at Arena Stage, and you know he did a great job just opening the door for for me to feel comfortable. Um, and being ready to, to grow, you know, and, and now that I'm in, in this position, we've, we've uh, added in, um, we have mid, mid season evaluations where it's a moment for fellows to sit one on one uh, with someone who's not their mentor or supervisor because each fellow gets a mentor or supervisor, which I think in itself is a great thing as well. But it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to sit and talk about anything they want to, you know, whether it's personal or whether it's professional and how to balance personal and professional, which is something that we're, we're sort of uh, big about and something that I've noticed that a lot of fellows are working on as they're uh, coming out of college on how to, how to make that balance. And so I think it's about just really uh, like Camilla said, just opening that access to everything, you know, n no door is closed uh, in the theater, you know, fellows can go into any door possible and talk to anybody, and we actually encourage them to talk to as many people outside of the department they're working in as possible in any given moment to, to learn as much as you can, because you never know when you come back to that theater in another position and a conversation you have with someone else is going to be more beneficial than, than you actually thought it would be. Yes, so... Um, as we're having this conversation, I'm also thinking about just the application process. Um, what is a strong application to you? Wow, that's a really good question. I think every department uh, is looking for different things and mm -hmm. looking for different people. And, and the qualities of a strong application, uh, not only is it just like kind of clear and concise communication, but also being able to share a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, our application process at Berkeley Rep, uh, and I think it mirrors many of the other application processes uh, online, mm -hmm. usually a, pers a personal statement, online portfolio for some uh, positions. Uh, and yeah, it, that's a really about it. And from there, that's what's really hard because it's blind. You're sending things in to the ether mm -hmm. and you... you being able to communicate those things about yourself, that passion, that personal statement, uh, letting your portfolio speak for itself as well because you're not behind it to be able to explain things. I think that can be kind of difficult sometimes. So being a, a strong communicator verbally as well as on paper and then seek help, seek guidance from the people around you to make have people look over your resume, have people look over your application. Spell check is your friend. Uh, <laughs> your best friend is going to know more about you than you're going to put on paper. They may f remember that thing you forgot that you're good at. Um, make sure you seek out as many people as you can to look over your application before you hit submit. And odds are you know someone in the theater who's hiring and they can look over it before you send it to these uh, organizations and institutions. So make sure you are already uh, accessing your, the network that you've already built so that you can begin to grow your network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important to take the time to uh, look over it because I've received applications where I've received cover letters to other theaters for the um, application that they're sending for. Whoa. So you, you really just need to take that time and really, especially in that personal statement, 
say something special, say something that's going to make you stand out so that people want to continue to read because that's going to be really important. But spell check, I, I could not agree more with everything he said. And just make sure that uh, you really need to stand out because we receive hundreds of applications. It's a very hard process. So anything that's going to help you get an, a little bit of an edge is going to be great for us. So if, if you did receive a cover letter that was not addressed to ACT, like what would you do in that situation? I actually, I, because it's a learning opportunity, everything that we do is a learning opportunity. I will send an email back to this person and let them know, you know, I, I want you to know that we received your application. You did send a cover letter addressed to a different um, organization. If you would like to reapply, please resend it. But you just need to know that you know, we, this happened, it might happen to other applications that they've sent out. So, it, you know, you're trying to help them too, because again, it's all about learning. You don't want to, you want them to learn from their mistakes so that they can never make that mistake again. And yeah. it's really hard because sometimes you're at the crunch of the application yeah. process. So they may not have time to get back to it, or you may not have time to send them that uh, reminder. So all of a sudden their application doesn't get considered for that year, even though it was super strong, but because of that one tiny mistake, Copy and paste. Jump in here because I, I, I've had the yes. exact same experience happen <laughs> at Hartford Stage. And that's one of my pet peeves is, you know, proofread your material. It, you know, you just got to take a little extra time. Um, and the way that I go through the applications, um, and this is probably very similar with many of you, is that I read all of them. So I'm kind of like that first line and then send it on down the line. So I really want to take the time and I actually have a rubric and I score each application and it's based on a lot of different factors, you know, education level, skill level, experience level, your passion that comes through, you know, and and then of course the quality of the application itself. So if you have any spelling errors or things like that. Um, so if you make a mistake like that, it's not an automatic out but it certainly doesn't <laughs> doesn't look great because you know it, it shows that overall um, attention to detail, which is really important in most of these fields. So you know, just take your time with it is one of the biggest pieces of advice that I would give. I also think it's important to make sure that you you do your research of of the theater of the department that you're interested in, um, making sure that you have some some baseline of this whatever skill sets that might be required for for that position that you're applying if, you know if, if it's a technical direction position but you have necessarily no technical direction skill sets it may not be the best fit for you there might be something else that's better for you so I think it's really important to to do your research so then you're not wasting your time or um, the time of the theater who's going through your your applications um, I know at the arena stage we have we require a diversity statement, which may not be the norm in every um, uh, theater. And so, if you skip that diversity uh, statement, you know it kind of takes your application out um, from our process because that's really important for for our mission here at the arena stage. So just make sure that you do your research and that you you check off you know every list or every requirement that that's being asked for before you submit your application. So let's say if a person um, does have a few mistakes on their application, but the writing and, and what their thoughts are strong and passionate, they might not have the experience that some other people have. Um, how often are people like that accepted into the fellowship program? Can I speak to that one? Um, yes. I know specifically at OSF, they encourage people also who have no background in theater to apply. You know, uh, so, uh, yeah, um, you don't have to have it. And one of the things that Sharifa Joka talks about is going out and uh, looking for people. Like uh, when you're looking for your keys, you know, that you have to, when you are intent on finding keys, you have to keep looking and picking up the couch and the cushion to find them. So sometimes you don't always find them in, in the area of theater. Uh, Sharifa found me how... A friend of mine, very dear to me, <laughs> told me that she was coming to town and that I needed to meet her. It was not because I was not at the theater. I came and crashed a dinner party based on the word <laughs> of this friend and ended up in meeting. Uh, Sharifa didn't know how uh, I could apply or why 
I would. Of course, I'm a theater practitioner, but it's not the case for everyone. So I know I got off into that story. I'm really trying to say Aaron Washington. <laughs> well, we need to meet uh, Sharifa. I was hoping she would catch in, uh, catch on and, and join, chime in with me. But she let me she left me hanging. But um, so you don't have to have the experience. You can just be interested, be recommended by someone and apply. You can speak with Sharifa and she will find something for you and create in that way. It's creating a more uh, equity by inviting future generations of children or people who have not been doing theater and say, hey, you know, what are some things you're interested in and how can this theater fit that for you? Because this is a business and there's plenty of areas for you to join in. So. I remember um, when I was at Arena Stage, I was at the end of my fellowship with HowlRound, and I didn't know like where I was gonna go next, really, um, if I would just go back to New York or back home to Alabama. And I went out with some of my colleagues, we went to a bar, and I wasn't gonna go, but I was like, let me go. Um, and I got to meet universes, Stephen and Mildred Sapp. And we hung out and we talked. And by the end of the night, they were like, yo, we're going to Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Uh, do you want to be a driver for us? And I was like, a driver? They was like, you know how to drive? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and they were like, well, it's not like producing, but you want to drive some Black Panther Party members? We're doing a show called Party People. And I was like, yes. So like literally, you know, not knowing where I was going to go, going to a bar, hanging out with these artists, like I found my next step. So I think it's important as Camila's bringing out to think about the untraditional ways that we get into the spaces that we're in, um, that, you know, though our application processes need to be like on it, bop, bop, bop. But as artists, we know that we bleed outside of the lines of formality and of perfection that, that um, sometimes the institution can make us feel like we need to have. But not only as yes. artists, I mean, also arts administrators as well. Of course. I mean, there's plenty of non-traditional uh, arts administration jobs that are now bleeding into the theater. I yes. mean, uh, graphic design or mm -hmm. uh, patron services, uh, those types of jobs now exist and there are fellowship positions dedicated to that. And so we can't always go that, oh, you are an actor, you're going to fit in this peg and you're going to be a teacher or you're going to be a director but sometimes maybe they, they want to be a managing director mm. or sometimes maybe they want to be a technical director who knows mm -hmm. so how do you find those people we've got to go to the non-traditional avenues and start opening up that access is access is dead without inclusion so mm. we've got to go and, and really reach for those things you had a sound bite say that one more time oh. anthony Stop. come on access without what? Uh, there's no access without inclusion so we are in the virtual space. Are there any questions? Um, our, our friend Dave, has he asked any questions? <laughs> Daniel, I'm sorry, oh, Daniel. We are shouting is, you out. This is Jamie Yunshore. She is our Hi. education fellow yes. at the Berkeley Rep School of Theater. Come on Hi, in here, everyone. Jamie. Um, so I actually do have a question. Okay. Um, Daniel Jones asks, what follow-up opportunities do you, does your program offer to fellows as they leave? Great question follow-up opportunities well you know towards the end of the fellowship we um, have a networking and a resume workshop and so I think that that is really important and I think that something that is not as strong as it needs to be but could be is LinkedIn and um, and that is a really um, it's an interesting thing because the theater it's not really targeted for theater but that doesn't mean it can't work and so the more that we use it it'll be a better reference and resource for um, everybody in our fellowship program and then when they leave they can see and grow through that um, and then having a strong alumni program for your fellows so that if you have your fellows mixers um, with theaters in the area invite alumni from that program to those mixers, because again, those are your, that's your foundation. And um, you can see where the fellows have grown from that. Um, you can also use that uh, as a resource to um, go to the fellows alma maters and really target for your future fellows because they've gone through the program. They'll be a great resource so that they can then start building so that people automatically know, you know, that there are uh, fellowship opportunities all over the country through your, you know, your current fellows. Mm. Anyone else want to pick up that question? I think, uh, 
talking about jobs as well in there. And I know that's a, a really big thing. People, they take fellowships or internships hoping to get a job later at that theater. Uh, and I know those stats vary all the time. I know here at Berkeley Rep, at one point recently, uh, it was almost 30% of the current staff were f past fellows or interns from this theater. So uh, that's really great. Uh, I know that one of the first passive application, like jobs come up, the fellows are the first people thought of. And I'm sure that that is the case at almost any organization. Absolutely the case at Harvard Stage. I think we've got currently we've got uh, six full-time staff members who are past apprentices and three of our overhires are, are past apprentices. So yeah, if they, when there are job openings, they're very often the first people considered. Um, you know, I mean, they know how everything ticks, so it's, a, it's, an, it's an easy path. So uh, we also do a resume seminar and networking and that, all of that. Um, we also give them access to our art search uh, account so that they That's can do that. Right? <laughs> so, you know, we're talking about access and, you know, we can't pay a lot, but we give them these tools that they can use going forward too. Can you all of that, that password? <laughs> <laughs> I can give it to you, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any more questions from one line? Okay. Thank you. Um, this is from Cara Post from Duke University. Cara asks, um, do arts administrators usually stay with one theater company or do they move around a lot? And I guess I would open up that question to ask, um, do you think it's worth it to move across the country for a fellowship? I think it's important. Um, I've worked at now, I think, four regional theaters, um, all the way from the East Coast to the West, and I'm from the South. Um, I learned a lot about structure, the structure of the institutions of each of these spaces are all very different. Um, leadership styles are all very different. People in space are different. Um, the way that people engage with their communities are different. So it, it's helped me to figure out in my own producing and projects how to create in a more holistic way. Um, everything that I do now has a bit of a space that I've been in. That is a part of my work. Um, the way I interact with people in my everyday life is, is influenced from this work. So I encourage people to like go way far away from home. Go internationally if you have the opportunity and come back. Um, you know, in the fellow land, you can bounce about. Just bounce about. Spend a year here, a year or two here. And then when you start to figure out where you want to put your seed in the ground, um, you know, focus in on that and contact those fellowship programs that you've been a part of and say, yo, I'm looking for work. Um, what do you have? It, it can't hurt. So have fun, bop about, and then plant your seed in the ground. Most definitely. I don't think... Um most art administrators or artists limit themselves to just one organization. Uh, I think that was a way that did happen a long time ago, but now you see people moving around and taking the opportunities that present themselves. Um, so you, you have to be creative and you have to be flexible as well. Um, I know myself, I came from the East Coast to the West Coast and I grew up in the South starting theater at, down in uh, Georgia. So it is, it's all about where the opportunity is and you'll find your home. You, you definitely will. Uh, you, your home is that network that you build and it keeps expanding with every single opportunity you pursue. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm from the Bay Area. Um, then I went to Vermont and then I came back and then I went to Florida State and then I came back to California and then I went to New York and then I'm back here because I decided that I wanted to make San Francisco my home. But I have, who I am today is because of everywhere I've been. And it's made me a stronger person in my personal life and in my professional life. So don't be afraid to go out there. Find out where you want to be. Do you, where do you want to live? And through that, you can say, well, what organizations are in that area? Or vice versa. Where are the organizations you want to be? You know, uh, New York is, is, is where theater is, but it's not the only place it is. You don't have to learn about theater in New York City. It's everywhere. And um, that's such an incredible thing. So, you know, it's don't be afraid. Just go for it. Diversity of people and diversity of thought. And I think that's what happens when you start moving and seeing and expanding. Yeah. I think anyone, it's also anyone else want to pick up? Yeah, I think it's also worth noting that, um, you know, with this particular 
field, there's a, because there's a lot of movement, um, you're very often going to come across people wherever you've been. So, you know, if you've worked, say, at Hartford Stage, and then you move on to, you know, you go out to Chicago or something, you may come across somebody that you worked with before because there's so much movement across the country. So it's great to explore all the different opportunities and connect with people whenever and wherever you are because you never know when you're going to come across them again. <laughs> it happens a lot in this industry. And yeah, and I would like to pick it back and say there is no textbook way to do this and to create what works for you. So I would say yes, as an arts administrator, you probably will go to a different theater and, and that's okay. One more question. Okay, we have one more question, and this is from Carter Lowe from American University. Um, Carter asks, do you have any recommendations for those switching from more artistically focused paths, directing, acting, playwriting, to more administratively focused paths, and especially hiding how, highlighting how those experiences in the arts um, can prepare them for fellowships in um, more administrative roles? I was actually, I was actually just talking to this morning. Um, Something that's really interesting is learning, taking the time to learn about all the other different aspects of theater. So I've done internships in lighting and costume and um, stage management and acting. And I think uh, as an arts administrator in, in theater management, that's given me a strong foundation in the language that I need to communicate with directors and designers and production management. So I think that learning a little bit about everything is really important and it just makes you a better manager and a better leader. Anyone else want to pick up that? Yeah, I think I, to me, um, definitely um, coming into the development world, coming from producing and being an actor, being a director, a teacher, and then development, you know, um, I never saw that coming. But I feel like um, the fellowship had everything to do with me being able to um uh, make those connections and I feel like one of my uh, strongest tools is connecting with people and networking so through my network networking and connecting uh, and my personality someone in development saw that as a perfect person for development and that the only thing I was lacking was the tools um, as far as learning about donors prospect research and once I get those things under my belt this person felt like this would be a great opportunity for me and I never thought about that so I feel like, um, yeah, but anyway, yeah, having a fellowship and being able to go into different departments and find out if that's something that you would like to do um, is a great way to start doing that and then seeing where you want to land. You know, I, I really want to encourage everyone watching, especially if you're in college or undergrad or grad school, start going and applying for those internships before your senior year. Start building your resume in your sophomore and junior year so that you are a more attractive candidate. Uh, you know, when you talk about how do you get those skills from acting and directing to uh, quantify into transitioning, it's about starting a little bit earlier, but also finding where those applicable skills lie. Uh, as an actor, I found out when I was on national tour with the uh, national players and only that I liked teaching workshops. You know, I loved teaching Shakespeare workshops. That's where I started to develop my love of education and, and my belief of that. You know, but I had to start that process earlier on so that I could find that love and come back to it. So start early. If, if it's easy to do it when you start early, it gets a little bit harder when you start late. This has been such a phenomenal conversation. We're actually at the end of our of our time. But before we go, um, I like to do something in the Alabama tradition. The woman who's, who taught me theater, Dr. Tania Stewart, um, would always teach us to honor each other. So um, I would love for each, everyone for each, from each theater to just give one short word of encouragement to the many um, people that are thinking about applying to your theater, what's a word of encouragement that you could give someone today? Um, don't ever feel like you can't ask questions. Ask the questions that you need so that you can make sure that you're making um, the right choices to decide where you wanna be. It's not, it's, you're never wrong when you ask the questions. 
be present. Uh, I had a mentor teach me that, and it was reinforced uh, through my fellowship at Arena Stage. Be present, uh, listen, be mindful. Uh, doing those things, it really opens you up uh, to all the opportunities that are out there, and it, it, it could only create good. Um, I would say uh, don't be afraid, kind of uh, similar to what you were saying, is that... Um, like the approach when you go on an audition, let that five minutes that you're in the room be your five minutes. Let your time in your apprenticeship or fellowship be your time. Get what you want out of the program. And if if the traditional path of that program doesn't get you what you want, ask for what you want. Because very often the answer is going to be, yes, we can do that for you. You know, don't be afraid. Well, I would say don't be afraid to direct and produce your own life and know that you are mighty and that if you believe in yourself, you can do anything you want to. You can do all things. So one, one thing that uh, the first meeting I had in my fellowship program, our, our costume director said was uh, root where you're planted. And that's something that's always stuck with me. I think it's very important just to wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you choose to root where you're planted and then branch out as far as possible and touch everything possible. I would say to close this out, you're enough. Um, the skills that you currently have are enough. You can go into space and be yourself. Um, continue to have an openness to learning, but just know that where you are right now, is just right. So have a good time. Thank Anthony. You all so much for joining us. Thank you for watching. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors for Creative Careers, American Express, and thank you HowlRound TV and, and all the folks at HowlRound. Uh, and we want to invite you to our next Creative Careers panel. Uh, it will be uh, titled A Discussion of Theater Arts Administration with the Managing Director of Berkeley Rep, Susie Medak. And that is on Monday, February 22nd at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.